Well, happy Friday, everybody. I am Dana Miller with JERHR Group. Um, some of you may have, may recognize my name from Inspiring Solutions. Uh, we joined them back in November and it's been a great new partnership that uh, it's just uh, has added so much more to our uh, capabilities of delivering talent development and HR services and compensation. So today we are going to hear from Larry Beers, uh, Director of Consulting with JER HR Group. And he's gonna talk about rewarding and compensating your employees. So the purpose of our Friday, our webinars, we've been doing these free Friday webinars for probably about close to 10 years now, the third Friday of every month. Uh, we'd like to deliver some monthly motivation and uh, expose you to one of our inspiring programs and our products. So like I said, today, Larry is gonna be talking about compensation and rewarding your employees. Um, as you know, the job market is very tight right now. So it's important to keep, retain your employees. The webinar agenda, aligning rewards with company culture and values. Larry is gonna talk about identify meaningful ways to engage employees and respond to employee needs post COVID. So that's uh, something that a lot of people are concerned about, trying to get their employees back to work or learning how to work hybrid or remote. So I'd like to introduce Larry. Uh, he began consulting with JER HR Group in 1995. He's had more than 15 years experience in human resources management. He's worked extensively with companies of all sizes and industries in compensation and benefits, compensation studies, custom surveys, executive compensation analysis. He's written and presented Intermediate Sanctions Compliance, New York State Governor's Executive Order Number 38, and Related Governance Best Practices. Larry is an active member of World at Work and the Society for Human Resource Management. So I'm going to give the remote control over to Larry here and he's going to take it away. Okay. There Thank you, go. Dana. All righty. So as Dana said, we're, we're going to talk a bit this morning about uh, compensating employees, but also rewarding employees. So um, I think what we want to do is sort of distinguish between those two terms. Um, comp really is you know, compensation, you think of uh, employee pay, and that is intended to address their basic needs. Uh, they need to be able to pay their rent, buy food, pay their bills, uh, and all and meet the basic social needs uh, that a salary uh, and uh, financial rewards provide. You can't forget the benefits as well, because those are an uh, integral part of your compensation program. The expectation for most employees is that their compensation will be competitive within their labor market, either their geographic market, their industry sector and the like. Um, and under the compensation program, your rewards may be somewhat limited uh, to, depending on your approach, cost of living adjustment uh, only, and that usually is reflective of the uh, any increases in the consumer price index in your uh, specific geographic area. You might have merit increases, and um, the, of course, those recognize performance and usually incorporate uh, COLA and then build in a layer uh, of performance uh, in addition to that. Of course, there's variable pay, uh, which can take various forms. Uh, of course, that might include uh, sales commissions or other types of commissions, uh, incentives, uh, either short-term or long-term incentives, and uh, of course, discretionary bonuses may be included in that. Uh, and then of course, uh, the, for those uh, that are uh, publicly traded, there are equity and stock options as well. In other uh, types of organizations, there may be phantom uh, stock options as they uh, 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 call them. Um, so those, but those are, are, you know, again, important to be able to attract and retain employees what we think about is in terms of rewards 
is how you go beyond that, that you, how do you engage employees and reinforce the desired behaviors that are so important within your specific organization. I like to think of this as having multiple facets to uh, developing your overall uh, overarching strategy that you start with a bedrock of uh, employee engagement strategies. These are the things that will really help uh, employees to understand who you are as an employer. Um, and they, you know, again, they help inform all of the other aspects of this. So um, your compensation strategy uh, is, dry, is driven out of your desire to engage employees, as are your organizational values. They inform that, that strategy as well. Uh, so I think these all uh, work very well together and really um, help you to uh, set up a reward strategy or a comp strategy that will, uh, again, be meaningful to employees and um, you know, help tie them to you. So let's talk about some of those employee engagement strategies. Uh, as I said, these are the, uh, the ideas that will, uh, and actions that will help employees to uh, understand who you are as an employer. So it's important that you reinforce your organization or your company's mission and values. Why do we exist? Why do we want you to be part of us? Here are our uh, cultures uh, and values. You should have clear and consistent communication regarding your strategic direction and priorities. That helps employees to understand who you are as an employer and where you hope to be and help uh, them understand what their uh, part is in contributing to the organization's success. It's important that you regularly reinforce and consistently interpret organization policies. You want to be sure that uh, employees do have a good understanding and that they see that you are uh, being consistent, that you are reinforcing. These are our policies. These are our expectations. Uh, you have to understand those in order to work here and be successful. And of course, realistic and challenging performance uh, standards um, you know, and metrics and regular feedback. Uh, those are all things that are tied to uh, how you evaluate performance and how you reward performance. And then it's also important to provide regular status reports on a department or organization's work projects and goals. That helps people understand what, what they are doing is actually having an effect on your uh, ability to achieve um, your uh, uh, strategic goals and strategies. So all of those are very important um, in terms of setting the stage for determining how uh, then to compensate and reward your employees. Let's talk a little bit about the difference between some of these. Um, again, with compensation, you want to be sure that your base salaries are competitive enough to attract and retain staff with the skills that you need in order, for, uh, in order to achieve your goals. You want to provide a package of benefits and perquisites that's consistent with industry standards and that they meet employee needs. Uh, you know, certainly the, if you can go above and beyond, that's wonderful, that's um, great, but at least let's satisfy the basic needs. Let's provide health insurance, uh, life insurance, disability, um, uh, vacation time, pay, uh, paid holidays and things like that. And then you want to provide opportunities for salary growth in, in uh, line with market trends. And again, that can vary uh, by industry sector, certainly by uh, geographic area as well. When you think about those uh, salary increases or salary growth, you know, that again, the COLAs, merit increases, general increases, um, but that can also, you, you might want to take into consideration, um, again, uh, the financial financial rewards that go beyond that, such as um, formal incentive uh, programs that are specifically linked to the achievement of organizational priorities and uh, strategic goals, uh, that you set metrics uh, at the beginning of a year and say, here are the things that we want to achieve this year. And if it, we have achieved them at the targeted level, here is what your reward will be. You go in and you set it up at the beginning of the year. People have a good understanding of what, uh, what their expectations can be and they're met. Uh, and if they're not, they don't get the, the reward. So, uh, but you have at least established um, the carrot uh, to, uh, to uh, provide rewards to them. 
Um, likewise, if you don't have that uh, sophisticated a model, you might just uh, take a look at the end of the year and say, we'll build into our um, salary increase pool some discretionary monies that will then be uh, awarded to top performers who have uh, demonstrated significant achievements to our success. So all of those are part of your compensation strategy. When we talk about rewards, those go beyond just those basic needs, as, you, as we said. They reflect your culture and your values. Um, you want to be sure that they're derived from there, and they reward achievement beyond just standard uh, uh, performance expectations. They reinforce those desired behaviors and characteristics and thereby support employee engagement, help them feel that they are part of you, that uh, they fit in, and that they're being recognized for their efforts. When we think about setting a compensation strategy, this is really kind of almost externally focused. How do we compare to others? Um, you know, in terms of our salaries, our pay rates, how do we, you know, are we going to lag the market? Is it our intention that we're going to be slightly behind the market and maybe make up for it with, uh, you know, we've got a really compelling mission. Uh, we've got really uh, engaged employees. We've got a work culture that is just, uh, you know, just exciting and vibrant. Um, but we do pay it are a little bit lower. And we also make up for it with maybe some benefits. So that, that could be a conscious strategy uh, that uh, one might take. Um, you might, uh, most organizations do tend to want to at least match the uh, market, providing salaries and benefits that are comparable to others. And then others may want to lead the market that they provide salaries and benefits that are, go beyond what the market is. I think your first step is to find out where you are in the market by participating in salary surveys um, that may be uh, specific to your geographic area, uh, to your industry sector. Uh, there are a number of membership uh, associations that collect salary information and uh, benefits information and provide that to their members. Uh, so I would encourage you to do that, uh, to do participate in those uh, so that you at least have a good understanding of where you are relative to others in the market. Of course, another way not too hard a sales pitch, but uh, is to conduct a uh, salary study, uh, have uh, a, an external consult and consultants come in and assist you with uh, doing a comparison to the market, identifying the, the appropriate market uh, segments that you want to compare to and letting you know how you, uh, how you stack up to others. So again, I, I, th I think of comp strategy as a, that external focus, where are we relative to others? When we think about the reward strategy, and let's just see here. There we go. Oops. Maybe something happened here. Oh, you're on my computer. Hold on. Let me fix this, Larry. Okay, thank you. I don't know how I got there, but. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Okay, hold on. Almost there. Oh. Okay, hold on guys. If you need to, I can go back to my- oh, There we go. Alrighty, here we are. And if you turn the controls back over to me, I can- Here, hold on, let me get you back to where you were. Alrighty, thank you. Let's... And it would be setting a reward strategy. Right there. Perfect. Okay. Well, there we are. Okay. So as, as I said, the compensation strategy, you really want to think about how you uh, compare to others. 
when I think about a reward strategy, I, I think about you know, what is it that makes us unique? Um, who are we as a company? So, uh, and how can we set up a rewards program that will, will establish something that is near and dear to our heart? So some of the things that you look like, uh, look at when you uh, think about your reward strategy, what are our core values? It's a great exercise for you as a company to identify what those are. You know, they can include such things as respect, commitment, professionalism, honesty, integrity, high quality uh, del service delivery, uh, customer service excellence. There are a number of things that you as an organization can uh, do, sit down and say, okay, who are we as an organization? What are the things that we really want to reinforce and make sure that we have a culture that, that uh, really reinforces these uh, types of values? There are also operational values as well. So consistency in, in approach might be one or open communications, team focused environment, uh, responsible risk taking, cost effective operations, all of those things that get to how you deliver uh, your, um, your services, your, uh, your products, uh, all of those things. You know, what, what is it that we want to make sure that again, that we, we have in place to make, uh, support our ability to be successful. And then the, um, I think about opportunities. You know, what are the kinds of things that we want to put in place within our work culture that set us apart from others? We are a learning environment. We wanna be sure that our employees have the tools they need to, um, to grow within their professions, that they have the opportunity to learn about our business. Uh, you provide them with stretch assignments that they're they're able to be assigned to something special that, uh, you know, will be a special project that will grow their skills and, you know, have, have them mentored by somebody. Uh, of course, a culture of ongoing feedback that you have, uh, again, set up that uh, those engagement strategies of uh, setting uh, clear performance metrics and, um, and then giving ongoing feedback so people know at all times how they're doing. Um, skills training. Uh, and active career development. Again, all of these are things that um, may be a part of an organization that, um, again, make you somewhat unique. Yeah. All right. There we are. So now that you've sort of I think I want to make sure I didn't skip a slide. Yep, that's right. Okay. So, what to reward? Now comes the you know sort of the, um, the where the rubber meets the road. You've identified your values. Now it's time to identify the specific desired behaviors that will model that will um, make sure that those values are are, are live. Um, so, if you look at high quality service uh, as one. Define very uh, specifically what is what is it that you expect that someone will listen carefully and respond appropriately, that they demonstrate respect in each interaction, that they don't judge, that they are listening carefully and trying to put themselves in a customer's shoes and see where they're coming from, and they go above and beyond to meet a, a customer's needs, or and or stakeholders' needs, or a, a colleague's needs. Uh, and, open communications, uh, effective interpersonal skills, that they are a proactive information sharer, um, that they don't, uh, you know, they're not a log, uh, log jam um, and keep information to themselves that, that they actually do make sure it gets passed along the pipeline as necessary. Um, that they are cost effective. They maximize the resources that the organization provides to them, either supplies, equipment, um, budget dollars, whatever it might be. And then they also are able to control budget uh, within the established parameters. Um, responsible risk taking, another organizational value that we uh, talked about early. Um, we want to suggest innovative solutions that they weigh options appropriately and they accept accountability. So the, all of these, again, you want to identify very specifically what is it that will um, carry through those values and make them a part of our work life. 
and that we can in, uh, engage in our daily uh, work activities. When you think about the rewards that go along with that, it's it really important to understand that one size does not fit all. Um, you have multi-generational workforces, um, people who are at different points in their careers. Um, the rewards may be very different for somebody who is just starting out versus somebody who's been with the company for an extended period of time. Um, so it's, uh, and of course, the multicultural workforces. Um, so you wanna be sure that you um, address some of those concerns and that you're able to incorporate um, all of those perspectives into developing your rewards program. Uh, it's important to ensure that your rewards program is inclusive, that it does pr provide equal access to all employees um, to earn rewards. Uh, so you, again, cultural things can very much come into play that you may have a culture that, that, uh, that has certain values or an organizational culture that has certain values, but then how do you make sure that somebody, uh, if you're saying, okay, fine, this is a, um, you know, an information sharer culture um, and somebody's not used to that, they're not used to, or, or they're not used to necessarily putting themselves forward. Um, how do you get to uh, helping everybody feel comfortable in doing that in a way? How do you establish some rewards that may get work around that? So it's important to get some representative employee input um, to help identify the most meaningful rewards for different groups of employees, for different uh, uh, segments of your employee populations. And so some of the ways to do that are focus groups, task teams, uh, suggestion box, employee engagement surveys, and stay interviews. Uh, one of my colleagues shared with me uh, something that she had done with one of the companies she worked with. They had uh, basically spun off a couple of employee groups from the parent companies, and they uh, wanted to create um, a collective employee, uh, employer uh, culture, shared culture that brought them together under the new employer's name. So they um, you know, blended in um, employees from uh, both of those new groups and as well as the satellite employees who was working remotely and uh, formed a, um, a, a work team so that they were able to um, get employee input and then they, uh, helped inform the new values of the company, uh, of, of the new newly formed entities. So they solidified those organizational values with the new identity. And as part of that, you know, again, one of the things they did was they created tokens and note cards so that employees could reinforce those desired behaviors and values with other employees. They could uh, you know, hand them a token if they saw them uh, modeling a specific valued behavior. Um, so it became almost a, a game in a way a lot, uh, that cre created a lot of fun. They were able to you know, count up at the end of a week or of, a, of the month how many uh, points or tokens or note cards an employee had collected, maybe enter them into a lottery and then have some fun prizes out of it. So they really made a fun process out of that focus group or task team. So I think uh, those are the kinds of things that you can think about. How do you, um, you know, get that input? One of my experiences was working with an organization that had been very traditional and siloed and they wanted to break away from that and break down the silos and create a culture that reinforced uh, you know, team behaviors and uh, shared information and collaboration. And so one of the things we did was form a, um, a task team, mostly around job evaluation of all things, um, but it was across the organization. It was their first experience as an organization in working together across uh, teams. And it was an, a wonderful experience because everybody got to share their own perspectives, their understanding of specific jobs within their area. It taught people to listen and to understand other perspectives. And uh, it, it created a whole culture of respect. And they continued long after the exercise was over uh, to meet to, uh, as a team in other areas as well. So I, I can't emphasize enough that having some kind of representative groups of employees providing input on your rewards program um, 
it, it, it's so important. Okay, well, let's talk about some sample rewards. Um, we've talked a little bit about those monetary rewards that there are formal incentives that are tied to specific achievement of organizational or perform, uh, personal performance goals. Usually you set those up at the beginning of the year, set up the objectives, set up your re uh, rewards, and then monitor and provide feedback throughout the year. And at the end of the year, you understand where you are in relation to your targets and can uh, define the uh, appropriate rewards then. As I said, there can be discretionary bonuses that you just see what's left in the pool at the end of the year. And if there's sufficient funds, you may decide to take a portion of those and reward individuals who have been uh, superstars, who've contributed, uh, cr contributed above and beyond toward the achievement of goals. Um, there are also spot bonuses to re re reward special accomplishments throughout the year. So I think that's, um, those are uh, useful. They're, they're usually fairly small dollar amounts. They're not, you know, but they, they do recognize when somebody has stepped in and really addressed um, a need within the organization. And uh, it's very helpful in reinforcing uh, that ability to step up, the desire to step up. There are also gift cards. Um, but I have a friend who works in retail and he is, thrilled every time he, he gets a gift card from his employer. Uh, and it's just because I saw you interacting with that client, you really went above and beyond in listening to them, working with them. You spent over an hour on that interaction and they left very satisfied. They spent a ton of money. And so here's a gift card to say thank you. Um, so they, they, those can also be reinforced and uh, I believe gift cards are not taxable. So <laughs> there's another um, side to that. Then there are, of course, non-monetary rewards. Um, a simple thank you. Um, I will say early in my career, I was working on a big uh, volunteer effort and uh, helped organize a weekend retreat, uh, training our volunteers um, to be effective fundraisers. And at the end of it, um, I got a handwritten note from the chair of the uh, of the committee that put uh, that put that together, with whom I had worked pretty closely, and that was just a thrill for me to have a handwritten note that said, "Thank you for all that you did. We couldn't have uh, pulled this off without your efforts, and we really appreciate it." A simple thank you goes a long way. There's also public uh, public acknowledgement, uh, recognizing somebody at a staff meeting on a Zoom call, wherever it may be, just letting somebody know you, you did something special, you contributed something, you displayed a, uh, a, uh, a valued behavior that I, I just want to point that out and let you know that we, we saw it, we recognize it, and we thank you. Uh, staff spotlights, those can include uh, such things as employee of the month, employee of the quarter, employee of the year. You can put something on your company newsletter, you know, just a, a little here's some uh, a little spotlight on this, this person who has been with the company X period of time and they have really done this, 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 and this gives them recognition and helps them feel good. Team meals, uh, really great idea for uh, pulling a team together, for brainstorming over a meal, for rewarding uh, accomplishment of key milestones along the way. Um, Another great other social events uh, could be again at pro, uh, certain project milestones that you have a quick little party, and uh, so they're the, the great way to do that. Social uh, tickets, uh, movie tickets uh, are one uh, form of reward. Um, there are other you know tickets to a show, tickets to a concert, whatever it might be. Um, branded merchandise. Again, tying people to your, your company, helping them feel a part of it, they include t-shirts, baseball caps, tote bags, uh, whatever it might be that is you know, not given out to everybody, that they are something that are earned um, based on your performance and, and modeling of, uh, of behaviors. Extra vacation or personal time for uh, somebody who has uh, um, really, you know, they worked overtime, um, they you know, went way above and beyond in terms of effort and time spent uh, to get something done. And so you might give them a day off to recognize that. 
uh, or other special privileges. One of the things that um, I, I remember uh, doing uh, at one company was um, we created a, um, a scholarship for an employee to attend our annual conference. Um, it's, the employee had to uh, model uh, behaviors that were, you know, they went above and beyond in terms of working um, with employees, uh, working with employees across the, uh, the organization with its uh, chapters across the United States. So very much let's make sure that we recognize these specific behaviors and, and reward them. And that was to then come to our you know, this was working within a national office, come to our annual meeting where we all come together as a company and you see how people interact and what that, what that really is all about. And it was a great learning experience. And uh, again, help that employee feel really tied to the organization. So those are all great ways of using non-monetary rewards. Larry? Yes. In the uh, chat, I asked, uh, people to put in if they have a reward program what is it yep and Kathy said we have a program called score staff recognizing outstanding recognition every day so staff get points for service awards spot bonus points for game changer activities peer peer recognition annual core value awards for each department and annual employee of the year we use the Terry Berry platform so they can select gifts with their points. Uh -huh. That's that's a great, great program. Good, yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I skipped right over the uh, service award, uh, service awards, and uh, again, that's something. If um, length of service within your organization is a valued. Um, uh, is a valued thing, then yes, certainly, you know, 5, 10, 15, 20, it's always a great, um, a great way to recognize uh, service. Again, one of the companies I worked with had a program uh, similar to, you know, using the Terry Berry, we happen to have Tiffany uh, in company, uh, but they had, here is a selection of, uh, of gifts that you can, uh, that you can choose from at the five-year level. Here's what you can choose at the 10-year level. Level. Here's what you can choose at the 15. So the dollar value, of course, went up. So um, that, that was another uh, nice way of recognizing um, service. I saw that there was one other that came in. Yeah, it just came in and says, from Luann, we have a company recognition program where you are allotted so many recognition points to be awarded to others through the year, so you can send it virtually with a note depicting the reason for the award. We then have a store that we can shop for merchandise to purchase the points given. She recently got an air fryer and a Versace perfume. Heck yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Alrighty, so some of the rewards linked to professional development can include on the job training, opportunities to work in, on special projects, participation on task teams, um, team leadership. Um, you put somebody in charge of, of a team for a bit. Uh, you could do rotating, again, attendance at professional conferences, skills training, formal education courses. Again, people are demonstrating that they are uh, high performers, that they have the potential to grow. So giving these rewards linked to professional development reinforce that uh, the desired behaviors, reinforce their ability to grow within the company, build engagement, and provide meaningful rewards. Let's spend just a couple of minutes now talking about some of the COVID and post-COVID considerations. Um, boy, oh boy, we've all had this with the work-life balance, and especially when working remotely, um, you know, those of us who had you know, basically we're told to stay home. <laughs> um, work became a very different animal. I was at my computer oftentimes by seven in the morning, checking emails and often working through until seven or eight at night. And I know I'm not alone, <laughs> however, uh, you know, and working through weekends because after all, what's a weekend and where are you gonna go? What are you gonna do? You can't go to the movies, you can't, can't go out to dinner or anything like that. So um, might as well get some work done. Um, though needless to say, a lot of us got a little burnt, a little crispy around the edges. Um, so one of the things that are some of the things that people have been doing um, 
mobile apps um, such as uh, Headspace and Calm, uh, things that help people um, de-stress um, and focus on something else. There are some that have games that you can play that help de-stress, wonderful ideas. Mental health days. Um, I know at least a couple of companies that I've worked with have established, uh, you know, we, we have all worked so hard and we worked so hard and so long. Let's every other Friday, we will take a mental health day and no work, just, just chill out or, you know, even half a day. Um, telehealth visits, uh, mental health visits, particularly um, where you can either through your EAP or through your uh, health plan, maybe have a, a program that people can reach out to mental health providers and help to distress. Um, and flexible schedules. Um, I know that, um, you know, again, while I sometimes was there at seven, seven in the morning and working through to seven in, at night or later, um, there were times during the day that if I was doing that kind of work, I felt free to take a walk and go clear my head for an hour or to go sit out in my courtyard and read for a bit. Um, very helpful to have that flexibility to recognize that, you know, you've got to find some balance. Who among us is not zoomed out? <laughs> we are constantly in meetings, sometimes back to back to back to back to back with, I mean, I know some of my clients even, they're constantly late to meetings because they scheduled them, you know, just with very little break in between and they always run over. There comes a point where you just, and I know in my own case that a lot of those times when I, you know, we're meeting, we're doing all of these things, I know it's important. I can't get my other work done. You know, I am a hands-on consultant. I'm not just selling. I'm actually doing analyses and doing data entry and, you know, in preparing reports. And I can't get to those in, in the course of a day when I'm constantly on Zoom. So some of the, our clients and, um, and I have started to try to do this is establish Zoom-free days. You know, just make it known up front. I am not going to be available for meetings on this day. I am going to be, I won't say radio silent. I will check my emails at the, in the, at the beginning of the day. I'll check in at noon or during my lunch break. I will check in toward the end of the afternoon. But I am taking this day for myself to get some work done. Um, so that is another way, again, recognizing that um, that people do need some of that time to, to um get other work done beyond just talking about things. And then health. Um, I will admit I lost 50 pounds uh, over the course of the pandemic. I, that was a, a very mindful effort. Um, but I know so many people who said, guess what? I'm at my desk all the time. I am not getting up and doing the exercise. The gyms were closed. Uh, workout centers and buildings were closed. Um, so what can we do to reinforce um, healthy behaviors. And so um, my brother's company gave everybody fit, uh, Fitbits uh, to help track um, their steps. It, you know, they have a little haptic buzz that every hour it reminds them to get up and walk uh, at least 250 steps. Um, you know, it keeps track of the number of steps that you take. It uh, checks your heartbeat on um, calorie intake. Uh, those are all things that help reinforce healthy behaviors. Uh, again, uh, there are various mobile apps uh, with pedometers and uh, other kinds of things that you could provide to staff really to help them um, maintain healthy lifestyles. And again, there is a ben benefit to the company as well because um, you know, healthier lifestyles help reduce your health care costs. So um, that helps keep your premium costs somewhat lower as well. So those are all kinds of things that as, as we're coming out of COVID, um, if we're starting to get back to work uh, you know, on a semi-regular basis. I'm now in the office at least one to two days a week. Um, but those are all still things that we need to consider and help people understand um, how to do, how to work more effectively, how to, um, how to model those behaviors and how to, you know, and how to say thank you to employees for the extraordinary work that they've done through this uh, pandemic period. I always ask if any others uh, out there have um, addressed some of these either COVID or post COVID considerations, what kinds of programs you might have.
anybody wants to enter those into a, uh, the chat, that would be great. In the meanwhile, uh, some parting thoughts. Um, stay, stay true to your organization mission and values. Those are the, the things that will guide you um, in, in establishing appropriate compensation and rewards programs. Link several strategies to maximize your impact. Use those employee engagement strategies, your compensation strategy, and then ultimately your reward strategy. Um, engage and challenge your employees to participate in organizational processes. Get them involved in task teams, focus groups. Uh, do stay interviews with people who have been on board for a period of time. Help uh, get their perspective. Why is it you stay? Um, why are we such a good employer that you haven't left? You know? <laughs> Um, ensure your compensation and benefits are competitive, uh, participate in surveys, take a look uh, at your uh, rewards programs uh, and make sure that they are being maintained uh, at a competitive level relative to your uh, peers. Monitor the effectiveness of your rewards program. Um, they can sometimes have a shelf life. Um, I know some of the things that I have developed in the past uh, again, particularly where they were named in honor of a particular individual. Um, you know, after a generation, nobody remembers who that person was. So it kind of lo loses its effectiveness. So you want to keep it fresh. You want to make sure that you're, um, again, engaging your current workforce, uh, you know, as people retire, as they leave. Uh, you want to take a look at who you've got in your workforce now and then establish rewards that are meaningful for them. So keep them up to date, keep them fresh. Um, and, you know, again, if you start to see slippage and, you know, guess what? Nobody's modeling these behaviors anymore. Well, are, are those still our values, uh, valued behaviors? Maybe there's something else. That, maybe these rewards just aren't enough or they're not appropriate to this particular workforce. Let's let's pull together another, another task team and see what we can do to uh, do that. And as I said, refine to adapt employees changing needs. It, these things are not static. Uh, your workforce is changing constantly. Um, the type of people you recruit for uh, may be changing. The skill sets are different. Uh, again, it's multicultural. You're, uh, look, uh, many companies are looking for more diverse uh, workforces. That means not only diversity in race, ethnicity, but also in perspectives, ability. So there are all sorts of things to take into consideration as your employee workforce changes. So do we have any other uh, any other items in the chat room? Based no, on? I don't see things. Does any, anybody have any questions, comments? And if you'd like to speak, I can certainly allow you to speak. All right. Well, that pretty well wraps up my, my presentation. Um, we'll welcome any comments or questions. And again, I believe there is a brief survey that will be sent out. Yep. I'll take over now, Larry. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and Thank so you, this has been very timely and useful. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so we did a... Um, a survey, a webinar survey, and it de we determined that this, the um, the time and the length of the webinars were going to change. Uh, we do do these every third Friday of the month, and you should be receiving emails. If you don't receive an email, please let us know in your evaluation at the end, and we will get you signed up to receive the emails. And we'd like you to invite others to watch. Uh, so the upcoming webinars, uh, so we've gone from three 30-minute webinars to one 45-minute webinar at 9.30 Central, 10.30 Eastern. Next month, uh, Graham Dale, he's a senior consultant. He's going to be talking about measuring organizational success, the HR audit. August 20th, Sandy's going to speak on discover a new way to engage and connect your people. And then September 17th, we have one of our new senior consultants who's going to talk about compensation plan design. Like I said, at the end of the survey or at the end of um, the meeting here, when you log 